morning. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. And I'm sure people are excited to be here and to talk education things. Um, so I have the pleasure <laughs> of introducing our very first Ed Talk for the evening. So James Hopkins has been a public educator for the past 20 years. In his current role as principal of Lions Farm Elementary School, he has been eager to assure to ensure uh, the, lions, the lion family descendants from slaves history is told and embedded into the culture of the school and community. He has taught and has been an administrator at the high school and middle school levels before moving to elementary school. His core values are gratitude, feedback, and collaboration. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Mr. Hopkins. Yes, I can hear all the applause through the muted uh, screens here. Um, Thank you for allowing me to be here, Dr. Rigsby. Uh, good to see you, Alejandra. I, I want to give a shout out to my teachers that I see, Megan Lewis, Mag Margaret Heath Campos, and Cecily Jo. Uh, my name is James Hopkins, as mentioned. Uh, I am the principal at uh, Lions Farm Elementary School. And my goal right now, very quickly, is to provide you with some very practical, or a very practical, very practical way to connect with your students. And so I'm going to share my screen, um, and I'd like for everyone to participate in this uh, first activity, um, stories and impressions, what students initially noticed most. I want everybody to think about three adjectives you hope your students will use to describe you one day. I want you to either write them down. You don't have to put them in the chat. One of the things I learned over virtual learning is to cold call people. And so you need to have your three adjectives because I just may call you uh, to share uh, what you hope, again, your students, um, how your students would describe you uh, one day. Again, I appreciate uh, you participating, Dr. Rigsby. This goes for higher ed, elementary, if you're here from pre-K, three adjectives. 30 seconds. I'm going to call on four people. I'm scouring the uh, Zoom room now, looking at folks that are not trying to give me any eye contact. Those are the ones I'm going to call on. So if you're not looking at your camera, get ready to be cold called. Let's see. Let's start with um, Aaron Clark. Three adjectives that you hope your students will describe you one day with. Well, thank you for bringing me into the conversation. And I would hope that my current students would describe me as my past students did. Um, loving, firm, and believing in them. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let's go with Daniel Kemp. What you got, man? Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I picked fun, informative, and energetic. Very good. Let, I do not want to uh, mispronounce this name, but I'm going to do my best. Um, Rungano? Rungano? Uh, thank you, Principal Hopkins. That's Rungano. And I went with lit, uh, nosy. I love it. <laughs> and sweet. Uh, usually, the like you said, uh, with uh, the sneak diss lets me know I'm, I'm engaged and that I actually care. Did you just use the word lit? I, I, I so appreciate that. And the last person, not uh, last but not least, Alejandra Gomez, I want you to share your three adjectives. Absolutely. I wrote down enthusiastic, honest, and loving. Very, very good. So um, <laughs> some of you probably have written down the words that, that you're seeing, uh, hardworking, grateful, passionate. Um, one of the ways I believe that your students will get there uh, is if you talk about yourself in both failure and successes, right? And so 
how do students notice you? They, they, they noticed you first and, and they know you, but how much of you do they know, right? So um, I think that the, the best way to really capture your students' attention is by sharing or starting that, that relationship with a story about a challenge you faced. Uh, you want to be human, right? So failures and challenges make us fallible. We are fallible people, but sometimes students can come into a classroom and see this very intimidating figure and think that we are infallible. Uh, if we don't take time to humanize ourselves, it gets really dangerous because they're not open. They're not as open to, to, to working with you. It's hard to connect with someone that you think is perfect, uh, that you think doesn't have or hasn't gone through uh, the, the, the storm. Uh, I have about 20 stories in my back pocket that I've uh, been using over the course of my 20 years as an educator. And I'd like to briefly share with you, give you some examples, some practical examples of how to disarm yourselves when you're working with your students. And so do not laugh at these pictures. Um, this is me. Uh, I, in third grade, uh, I, I failed third grade. Um, and one of the ways that I set this particular story up is I asked my students, uh, or asked my students, um, what's worse than being held back? And the answer, my answer is having a twin and being held back, right? And so as we went through elementary school, people looked at my twin and looked at me and, and, and were asking questions and were, you know, some of the, so, some kids were just very honest and some kids kind of figured it out, but the kids that were honest were asking, well, why is your twin sister in, in fifth grade and you're in fourth grade? And so that was very difficult for me to go through as, as a child. In, in middle school, immaturity. Um, I got kicked off the baseball team. I, uh, in middle school, I climbed on the top of my middle school with some oranges. And I thought it would be cool to throw oranges at the cheerleaders during cheerleading practice, during baseball. And so my coach kicked me off the team. Uh, they went on to win the middle school championship that year, and I could not celebrate with them. I was not happy. Uh, and then um, I was on academic probation my, uh, my first semester in college. Um, this was just pure laziness, right? I, I didn't go to class. Um, I enjoyed my first semester without doing a whole lot of work. And so I, I'm, these are examples of stories that would otherwise be embarrassing to share, right? A lot of times we don't wanna put ourselves out there with kids because we think that they're, they're not going to respect us. I was having dinner or lunch rather this past Sunday with a, a, a high school student. And I, I'm always asking people who their favorite teachers were and why, it's just something that, that really gets me up. Um, and she, she mentioned that, that there, she had a teacher um, that she thought was her favorite and I asked her why and, and her words were, she was human. I asked her what made her human. She talked about the fact that she was honest about stuff that she was going through. And, and again, there's a fine line between being too honest, right? And being honest enough with your students. Um, and so, in closing, your students want to know who you are. They want to know who you are. And, and, and I think if we can talk about ourselves more, especially through stories of failure and shortcomings, I guarantee you, your students will be more open to listening to you uh, when you start delivering instruction, right? Or, or maybe you are perfect and you've never failed. You've never gone through a challenge. Uh, please raise your hand right now. I would love to see who you are. Obviously, that, that is a trick question, but uh, here's my challenge. I'd like for everyone to consider memorizing three to five stories about times when you were challenged, failed, or did not accomplish something and share them with your students. They want to hear it. Um, I, the, the last thing that I'll say is um, my last year in the classroom, I was teaching eighth grade, 
And I shared the story about me failing third grade and the, um, the embarrassment that that caused me. And um, I was able to talk about um, how that made me into a stronger person. I had experienced failure early, um, developed some thick skin from kids trying to pick on me about not being smart enough. And those scars, those wounds really helped me in terms of being able to walk through some fire and accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Rigsby.